Um, what I want to say to you guys, I'm not going to be on video. Okay, good to go. Great. I'm not going to be on video. So uh, just to make the most of this for everyone, I recommend you uh, expanding the top screen. Just go to the top one and go a little three buttons at the top and just expand that so everyone can see the slides uh, as best as possible. Okay, so uh, we're going to be talking about um, sticks and CTI platforms uh, and just uh, just for brief background, because we always get this question um, in conversations as people ask, you know, how did you get into the FBI or how did you become an agent or, you know, how did you get into cyber division, cyber FBI? Uh, and so for, for, for brief background, uh, I got my bachelor's degree in music <laughs> has no relevance uh, to the FBI or, or cyber at all, but I had a degree. Uh, I taught school. I taught music in school for about three years and uh, just kind of got tired of that. I knew that's not what I wanted to do with my life. And uh, I'd always wanted to join the Army or join, just be in the military. So I joined the Army uh, just before 9-11. I graduated basic training um, two days after 9-11. So entered a completely different uh, military career uh, deployment for a long time in 2003 uh, to Iraq. And uh, as I was getting out of the military, um, a cousin of mine by marriage, who was an agent, uh, just asked me, hey, what are you thinking about doing? I, you know, I said, oh, I'll probably just do some more of what I've been doing just as, as a contractor. And he says, you ought to think about joining the FBI. And I looked at him and I said, I have a music degree <laughs> and and he says man that doesn't matter you got a degree you got all this experience in 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 the military um you know i was doing some some mi stuff and some aviation stuff and i was like oh okay i just never that just was not in the realm of possibilities for me and so i just thought why not the only thing they can say is no and so i did it and you know, here i am so when I first got into the um, into the FBI, the hot topic was counterterrorism. So I went to a counterterrorism squad, which is known as a JTTF, or as you can see this picture, a Joint Terrorism Task Force. And I did that for a number of years. And that was kind of exhausting. Just the op tempo was a bit exhausting. And I uh, wanted to start pivoting into cyber because I thought this is really where things are going. And so a number of years ago, a number of years ago, I just said, this is, this is where I want to be. And um, I did not have uh, a lot of cyber skills, but what I was really good at is I was really good at human. I was a really good human. -er. And so they needed someone on the cyber squad to help them recruit, you know, human talent and do stuff. So I, that was my, that was my foot in the door into cyber. And so uh, I have used that and leveraged that at about every turning point uh, to, to just get myself exposure and then to start learning more and more of the of the cyber skills of which is quite vast um, as you can imagine uh, so like many of you are wanting to do i transitioned into into cyber and i'm still attempting to learn new tricks i i will never never stop learning uh, so with that Here's our little plug uh, for the FBI. There are tons and tons of cyber jobs uh, and jobs of all kinds in the FBI. We all apply here. Uh, you know, me having a cousin didn't help me. He still told me, go to this website and apply. And I applied just like everybody else. Um, I will do a, a shout out. You guys are doing um, uh, the CKC7. And uh, one of the director of developments at KC7 uh, was actually a computer scientist with us. His name's Wayman Ho. If you go to KC7's website, you can see him. Uh, he was a computer scientist for us for a long time. Uh, the dude was, you know, he's like on the Jedi Council sort of of, of, of CS is here. Uh, he has he had a led a blue team at DEF CON and has won the blue team event for the past two years going uh, at DEF CON, but. Uh, he sadly went private sector last year, but we, uh, he, he's, he's a great guy and we, we miss having him. So speaking of transitions, uh, this presentation is really for those of you that are kind of flirting with the idea of getting into the realm of cyber threat intel. Some of you probably already are, 
Um, so uh, with that said, um, this is a few caveats here. This is, um, I'm not talking about enrichment services. I'm not talking about virus total or domain tools, um, though a, C, a CTIP will do enrichment. Um, I'm talking about where you put all of that data once it is enriched. Once you filter out all the noise and, and you only want to work with really good curated data, that's what we put into a cyber threat Intel platform. Uh, and you only want to capture, uh, what, what you want to capture is the context of the pertinent data points. Um, for instance, you know, you want to capture dates and times along with the IP addresses, because uh, IP address alone, as we know, is, is, is kind of worthless. So if you are daily using a CTIP, uh, like Cyware or Analyst One or ThreatQ or OpenCTI, uh, you may see some similarities uh, and some differences uh, of features in your platform. Uh, but you, I may not go as deep as you'd like to in just this 45 minute uh, demo and talk on it. Uh, this is kind of an intro for a lot of people because I'm, as I'm kind of getting out there and, and, and working with other people with CTI, I'm not seeing a ton of CTIP usage. I see some kind of different tools, but I don't see like a really good knowledge management of a tool for CTI info. Uh, but, you know, I can do deeper dives, but that would be a, a different presentation for a different time. So this is for guys that are looking for intros and, and they're looking to pivot over. So, How do we effectively know what we know about a threat? Uh, a lot of us uh, just are collecting tons and tons of CTI data. We're getting a lot of threat feeds. Uh, I notice a lot of uh, training topics on CTI, but not a whole lot that are incorporating uh, a platform that, that coalesces all of that data. And I think this speaks to the abundance of Intel. Like volume of data is both a strategic strength and it's a weakness. Uh, so, but we need to be able to search across and correlate internal and external data to see if a threat that we're looking at is something we already know about. Because uh, sometimes we don't, or maybe you know, one shop on the East Coast knows about it, but the shop on the West Coast has no clue, and they think they're finding something new and they're reinventing the wheel. So we need to be able to easily curate and connect and correlate um, institutional knowledge on threats and threat actors information and connections over time. And so there's all kinds of CTI, pl CTI platform A, B, you know, Z. Uh, there's even MISP, which uh, some people have used as a CTI platform. And it does okay with, um, you know, IOCs. And there's some tools that are just kind of like, almost a CTIP, but not quite. Uh, so we are interested in the ongoing cyber intel saga. It is, it is kind of like a decades long telenovela. Who's related to who? Who's gone bad? Who woke up with amnesia and doesn't remember they're bad, et cetera. You know, I know it's a super technical analogy, uh, but I hope you're picking up what I'm putting down. Uh, and like I said, MISP has been kind of a placeholder uh, on IOCs, uh, but presently the, the context that MISP carries, um, if, if I were to make it another analogy, is, is kind of like coloring with the old school eight piece Cray Crayola set versus the Bob Ross treatment using you know a really full featured sticks C-tip model. And I would say it carries over to visual appeal as well when it comes to the knowledge graphs that you get in CTI platforms. The, the MISP is just, it's a little brutish. It's open source and it's free, but, and, and it'll work if you got nothing else, but there are some other options out there. So what we're gonna be talking about is Sticks. I know some of you guys know about it, but uh, Sticks is, um, is, is agnostic of platform. The, the data packages, they're agnostic, Sticks, you can be put into any CTIP nowadays. This is kind of the standard that OASIS, the OASIS committee is 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 uh, developing for all of us. Uh, whereas MISP data was created for the MISP platform, uh, it does use JSON, so it can be parsed. However, MISP data can be ingested into CTI platforms 
and convert it to sticks, but a lot of context is absent and may need to be further analyzed when the data is deemed relevant. But uh, MISP isn't very backwards compatible with sticks uh, based CTIPs. There's, it can be done with a great deal of effort and there's even a MISP sticks converter on GitHub. Uh, but uh, we, we at the FBI, we do have a MISP and we use it because there are other uh, you know, partners that have MISP and so we use it, but it's, it's not our go-to for, for what we wanna use for CTI uh, Intel. So that's the thing about, about uh, a lot of CTI, uh, particularly like for me with, with, with MISP threat feeds, there's just not a lot of context. Uh, you know, an IP, you know, what, what's the context behind that IP? Is it a, a zombie node? Is it a C2 or is it home range? Like what, what are we looking at? Uh, so there's, there's no context of relationship between or among in other indicators that's, that's not a ton of help to me. Kind of helps know that it's bad, but you know why is it bad, and, and where is it in the in in the you know the threat landscape? So MISP doesn't really share very well with non-MISP platforms, uh, though. I, again, I hear there's development on on kind of making that more compatible. Um, but essentially, you know, how do we combine all these disparate data points to to make them relevant? So. This is kind of where a sticks uh, based cyber threat Intel platform comes in, comes into its own. And a CTIP, uh, the, the cyber threat Intel platform, a CTIP allows us to be more fully aware of everything we know on a threat and what others know via the data connectors that uh, feed our instance that are, we're, we're ingesting into our instance. But in order to know about that threat, you have to get the data into the platform. Uh, and so as you can see on the screen, this is kind of um, a very, very basic sticks model of, of the, the threat actors, the indicators, the campaigns, and then the relationships that go between them. And so we're going to look at it a little bit more, but there's a lot of context behind each one of those data points. So a lot of that threat intel that's coming in is, is done by your, some of your API connectors uh, to your commercial threat feed subscriptions. This is like Mandiant, CrowdStrike, Intel 471, all those flashpoint, all those kind of uh, uh, threat feeds that you can kind of ingest on there. Um, but uh, you can also do this uh, through data scrapers. You know, if you have a, a guy that can do a little bit of development work, they can create data scrapers uh, yourself, which don't require subscription. Just point it at a URL and you can pull down all the PDFs. Um, and a lot of these uh, C tips will ingest PDFs through uh, some kind of data extractor and pull out all the relevant uh, sticks model entities and objects. Uh, but these data scrapers, if you can get one developed, they're, they're very high utility for many uh, free threat intel location, uh, locations with really just minor minor changes needed. Uh, so for instance, you know, we've done one and we've done it to scrape our own IC3 uh, reports based on uh, the cyber reports we get on that. Uh, these are things that any of you can go and access. NSA cybersecurity advisories, uh, CISA CBEs, uh, even the UK, their NCSC, the National Cybersecurity Center, they have a reports and advisories. Uh, you can just, you know, point one of these scrapers at them, pull all this stuff down for free. Uh, and then if needed, you can kind of go to those sites. And uh, like I know the CISA CBEs, they will have sticks bundles, uh, sticks packages for those specific CBEs. If you want to ingest those, they already have the relationships built. So it's, it's, it's great. But the point being with this, with these uh, C tips, is this is a place, this is a space for curated cyber threat intel or fintel, finished intel, if you will. This is not a place to import all thirteen thousand IPs you pulled down from some sensor you deployed, or uh, you know maybe a search return you got. Uh, you don't take that and just dump it in there and see what it you know bangs up against. Uh, though you can do batch queries. If you want to just search and see, hey, 
you know, what's what's connecting here. You can batch query these things, but it's not it's, it's not a dumping ground. This is not where it's not a data lake. This is a place where uh, when you go to do your research, you want to know that everything in here has been fairly curated. Uh, so uh, we say, you know, remember guy go garbage in garbage out. Uh, that's it's 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 really a best practice kind of formalize and standardize your process for data entry uh, and utilize some kind of role based access controls you know peer reviews and then maybe some approval system depending on the size of your organization if if you're if you're a small shop of like you're, you're a sock of like three people uh, you know maybe you don't do that just do a you know peer review process and then you know drop it in. Uh, but if you're kind of a large organization, you kind of want to make sure that it, and, 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 and things are very decentralized. You want to make sure that everybody is dropping in good, good thread intel. And so just to give you kind of a, an idea of what these sticks objects uh, can carry with them is, as we see here, we have like a, a thread actor. And you, it could be a malware, uh, it could be a vulnerability and attack pattern, but all of these properties are kind of nested behind this threat actor. We can have his name, his date of birth, all of his aliases, where he lives, you know, his, his, um, you know, his email addresses, the, you know, the sites he's active on, um, anything, you know, anything that you think is relevant. If, if you're tracking threat actors, you know, let's just, the stuff would be, you know, relevant for you, but this this goes kind of for all objects. There's there's all kinds of data that's nested behind them. And then the other thing that's really really helpful is the relationships. Uh, so these objects can be related to objects, and sometimes the relationships are, uh, you know, you know, unidirectional. Sometimes they're bidirectional, but sometimes they're unidirectional and so in this case we see the threat actor he uses the poison ivy uh, malware variant he's attributed to you know adversary group bravo and he uses phishing as part of his attack um, and so those relationships are also captured uh, let's say within a report associated with his activity and then as we start building things out again, here's like the greater context, you know, here we're, again, we're looking at threat actors, but we can see that, you know, the tools he's using, the malware, the, the attack patterns he's using, um, maybe the attrusion set he's uh, um, attributed to or the campaigns that he's been active in, uh, indicators, um, vulnerabilities that, you know, he's usually known to, to exploit. And so all of this stuff is captured behind these objects. And then kind of building it out more, here's an example of malware relationships and vulnerability relationships. Um, and so you can just see the context building and there's a lot of layering and, and there's a lot of, of uh, there's, there is a hierarchy, uh, a nesting of, of objects that uh, is very, very helpful. Uh, to provide info on relationships. And so to kind of um, kind of demo this for you guys, I'm going to uh, go through uh, what we're using, which we're using OpenCTI. And so just for a little background, this is an open source project. It is on GitHub. It's free. You can go and download it. Um, and because this is uh, freely available, we are able to contribute code uh, to it for features and or capabilities uh, that enhance that enhance our analytical and operational capabilities. Um, so we have an overt account on GitHub and our efforts are being contributed back to the main code branch. Uh, so the things that we're like what, if you pull it down, you're going to get things that we've we've put in there. Uh, we're not trying to fork this for our own special use. Um, you know, we're, we're contributing to it. So, uh, and we'll continue to contribute to it as long as it's, as it's open source, uh, we will continue, continue to, 
to do that. So let me kind of give you guys a bit of a live demo. And again, this is not super deep, but kind of give you an idea of, let's say, how uh, we in the FBI would 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 utilize this and this will have some overlap if you're in a sock this will have some overlap like uh our esoc here at the fbi they are using this uh same tool and uh this is this tool is good if you're in a like i said like if you're in a sock of three or if you're in a you know a huge enterprise uh like ours this it were uh also find it very useful now admittedly uh the ui the GUI needs some work, uh, and that's actually kind of on our development roadmap, uh, something we're going to be working on. So over the next several months, uh, hopefully you guys should start seeing iterative. If those of you that are thinking about using it or are using it, you you will see some iterative uh, changes to this. But it's something that we have to um, kind of coordinate with the broader roadmap, make sure that it kind of aligns with, with uh, the larger project as a whole. So for this um, for this thing, just a, a brief overview. Um, this is kind of your top level uh, menu right here, and then uh, this is your dashboard. All of these widgets are customizable. Uh, if you you know, let's say you're you're tracking you know Russia threat groups, you could change all of these things up here to track just you know APT28, APT29, and get only the reports that are relevant to the malwares that, that they're using over the past, let's say month. Uh, and so every day when you log on and your dashboard comes up, it would have that relative information and all kinds of uh, widgets. Um, you can see down here, all of this stuff is customizable. So let's just say for, for our instance, our scenario here that, you know, someone called a local, like some, you know, InfraGuard member calls us and says, hey, um, you know, it, it looks like, we discovered our move it transfer server has been encrypted and it contains a clop ransomware note you know do you know anything about this and so i could just pop over here and in, in the global search button search search bar up here in the upper right just i'm just going to type in move it i need to remove these filters apologies and so here's the search returns global search returns everything with move it these are all the authors all the reports that have it but I see the software right here, move it. So I'm gonna pop into this software and look at it. So I'm in observables now, here's an overview. Uh, there's not a ton of information, but here in relationships, this is the latest relationships. I see there's a CVE related to this. And so I'm gonna click into this, see what I can, what I can learn. Now I'm in the relationship menu. This is just like the software is related to this vulnerability. This is, uh, hyperlinks. So I'm going to click into vulnerability. And so now I'm in the CVE. I can expand this window, kind of get an overview of what's going on here. I can look at a lot of these uh, relationships down here. All of these are selectable. I see some minor attack patterns, some reports, incidents, and I see some other. These are reports that are within the system right here. And then down here, these are external references. Uh, so it, let's say if I wanted to take a look at, at this external reference, I can just click on this browse to the um, open net, if you will, and I can read more information on what they have regarding move it. Um, so uh, I can click over and kind of read these reports if I want to. But so I, I basically I see that there's some, you know, there's some the malware Lima root is associated with this. So I'm kind of like, OK, I got I got some good info. This is this is pretty bad. Let me see if there's like any Yara rules associated with this. So I'm literally going to globally search for Yara and just everything. So we're going to maybe send some incident responder guys out there to see if we can get some evidence. So I have to. I have to filter this search right now. That's what I'm doing. I'm filtering it. Yara is an indicator. And so I'm searching, filtering it by indicator. And then the labeling, I'm going to look for just move it. Transfer. And so here I have uh, four Yara rules. Let me just bounce in this so I can kind of bounce into the Yara rule. I can expand this and, and take a look at the R rule. Here's all the labels that are also kind of associated with it. And again, 
more relationships down here. And so as an incident responder, if I wanted to, I could then select all of these. And then over here in this upper right hand, I can export this and I can export it as like a JSON file. It's a, it's a little dirty right now, but you know, our, 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 you know, computer scientists that go out there for incident response, uh, they'll just write, a, you know, kind of a quick script and clean it up. And then they can run all those YAR rules against that network and, and see what happens. Okay, let me back out of here. And I think I saw there was like a report I wanted to kind of take a look at. Well, uh, I'm not seeing it right now. Well, what I'm going to do is let's just say I got enough information that I want to create my own little uh, knowledge graph on, on on what I know. And I want it to kind of reach into the system and do, do some of its own analytical work, work for me. I'm going to click on this investigations button up here. And uh, I'm going to create a knowledge graph. We're going to call it VetSec. bounce into here and so it's blank there's nothing in here i'm going to add an entity and just like before i'm going to add i'm going to add that move it uh entity click out here and there it is so when i click on this again i'm in a knowledge graph all these things are selectable uh, a little window pops out uh, and I, I could kind of open another tab in my uh, window and get get this pretty much the same information, go back to where I was. But I want to build this out. So I'm going to go down here to this expand button and I'm going to have an auto expand. Depending on your needs, you can select which type of targets you want to expand on, what type of relationships you want it to look at. But just for the sake of knowledge, I'm going to select everything. So uh, you can see it pulled all these things that had some relationships. There's that CVE that we were related to earlier. I'm going to select it. So again, I when I select it, all this information uh, pops out. Here's the reports. Here's the external references I can go to. But again, I'm building my knowledge graph. So I'm going to go down here to expand. I'm going to select all and all, expand this. Um, and so let's see, there's some other things. There's, um, I remember it. Here's the clop. Yeah. I'm going to pull this out. I'm going to do the same thing with clop. I'm going to expand all. So as you can see, our I'm zooming out a little bit. Our um, our knowledge graph uh, continues to grow. All these yellow dots are indicators. Uh, the colors, obviously, the, the colors are associated uh, with with certain objects or entities. And there's any number of things. If I want to manipulate this uh, any way I want, I can. You know, if I wanted to move, these are all um, uh, miter attack. Um, patterns i can grab those and move those if i just want to uh, select some of them i can kind of draw a loop around them and it'll only grab those and i can move those around uh, i can select by just uh, the entity type if i only want to look at reports it'll grab reports and then it'll move those out there for me there's so many ways of just manipulating this um, feel that there's, there's even a 3d function it's it looks cool, but it's, you know, it's, it can be sort of discombobulating when you're uh, in it, but so it's, it's something fun to play with, but I kind of stay away from it. So once you've kind of built out your knowledge graph, there's a, there's a, a lot of stuff you can do. Um, 
this is kind of a draft workspace right now. I can, if I want to share this or if I want to let someone else work on it with me, I can select, you know, a unit, a, a specific user, and I can let them, you know, edit it. They can view it. They can manage it. And if at some point after it's kind of a finished product, I, I can let everyone look at it or just view it. Um, or if I have a small shop, I can let it, and I, tr and I trust everyone, I can let them uh, edit it as well. Um, and let's say that this uh, activity is part of a bigger campaign or it's part of a case, for instance. I can drop this into a container um, that's associated with a case. Say, hey, this is part of the 288 AWF file. Um, or if I want to share it with someone, I can export up here to image, I can export a PDF, or I can even download the sticks report and 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 send them a sticks bundle so they can drop it into their, their C tip and, and see what they got going on with it. Uh, just a, a, a quick maybe a, one more feature to show you guys. We now have threat uh, threat actors. There's groups such as like intrusion sets. If I want to look at through here's your all, all your APTs or cozy whatevers. Um, and then the cool thing, at least for us, because we like to track individuals, we like to put hands on keyboards, uh, we can track threat actor individuals. Um, so here's, you know, let's say we're going to go look at the Dark Lord. I can go in and I can see, you know, I, got, I get a picture of him, what kind of threat actor he is. I can see his, you know, his aliases up here his role his goals uh, you know what's his you know you know primary and secondary uh, motivation and then any kind of relationships uh, with him uh, there are even it's not as much tracked with him but let's say even on Luke Skywalker we have like the the biographical and demographic information um, over here to track them. And so this helps us kind of associate and track threat actor individuals. Even if we only know their alias, we can kind of start tracking them and we can start looking at like the tools they're using, their associations to maybe a larger group. And then, uh, cause sometimes they may be involved with just uh, like a criminal, like ransomware group, but they may have some kind of relationship to a larger, you know, nation state group. Uh, we can start marrying up the threat actor with the threat uh, activity um, and kind of bring those bring those together. And we haven't uh, fully fleshed it out, but we are working on dropping in some financial data and we're kind of uh, doing some greater granularity with, with the financial sticks models. Um, so you can start looking, um, you know, tracking money, flow of money, because, you know, for a lot of us, you know, just follow the money and you can, you can often uh, figure a lot of things out. So uh, we have a little bit of time left. Uh, again, just very high level view. Uh, are there any kind of uh, questions, general or, or somewhat specific uh, that I could answer for anybody? Just drop it into the, uh, the chat. Hey, Brad, thanks, man. Brad and I, Brad and I were at the National Cyber uh, Summit a couple weeks ago. He's a fun guy to hang out with and we're working, we're working on some, some CTI stuff together. He's a good guy. Go, go watch his, his presentation as well. How would a dental office consider using open CTI? Uh, that is the most creative question I think I've, I've ever heard. Um, I don't know. That's, I haven't, I haven't uh, really thought of it. That's, that's pretty, um, man, you're, you're getting in the weeds. I hadn't thought of like a dental office. You're using it. Maybe if, I guess if you have multiple like offices and maybe multiple uh, places, you could, uh, you know, if you got, if you got the staff, someone that wants to, to spend on this, um, these C uh, tips are pretty, are pretty uh, deep uh, in what they can do. So there is a, there is a learning curve. Uh, there certainly was for me. Uh, so, you know, you're going to, have to find someone that at least has the willingness to learn, you know, and just and, and be willing to feel stupid for a little bit if they're not used to it. But but just kind of get over that hump and keep keep moving on. Um, 
trying to think through how local business might want to implement this. Yeah, there, I mean, really, I would I would say this is for really probably a group that has like a, a sock of of some size, uh, just to track uh, their threat knowledge and help them continue to build it out. Because some people think of this like, what can this do for me right now? Um, but the the real the real benefit is like pumping the good CTI in it over time. And, and you're able to kind of build out those um, those indicators and those relationships. So when you see something, you kind of have some kind of historical knowledge. This is another thing. Like there are some people, like we we even in our organization, you know, there's like this one guy that he's the expert on, you know, topic X. And if that guy leaves, like all that knowledge goes with him. Well, this is a way of capturing all that knowledge so that when you know that person leaves we still have it in there and someone can go in there and kind of learn about it yeah would it be helpful for tracking criminal campaigns absolutely bec scams etc absolutely so within the cases you can track cases and like i said because of like the the hierarchical nature of this uh you can actually track campaigns so there could be like a larger campaign that is you know, going on that they're attacking multiple, like I, I can think of like when uh, maybe a decade ago, Iran kind of, we, we sanctioned the financial, U.S. sanctioned finance, uh, Iran's finances. And then Iran just kind of, you know, did a blanket you know, DDoS campaign against, you know, all of our biggest banks um, that would kind of fall within a, a campaign. But of course, you know, Bank of America is going to have a, a an issue and Citibank and Chase, they're all going to have their own things, but this would fall under, under that. How much care and feel does the threat intelligence need? Are business, businesses covering that mystical 80% of what they care about through automated feeds or does it take someone massaging? To, um, I will say like when you're, when you're, if you're getting some of these uh, commercial threat feeds, uh, you, It'd be a good idea to have someone someone really look at that API because uh, some of them we've had some issues with some of them where the where the data was kind of rough. Like I remember we got one in and it and it, it like labeled a YouTube video as an indicator. <laughs> so so YouTube is not an indicator compromise. Uh, so we had to kind of you know pull that out and and kind of finesse that API feed for what for what we need to do. Could I show off a little more on the connector piece? Uh, I don't think I have the time on that, man. And and really, there's probably I I would probably need to get one of my one of my uh, in software engineers to kind of talk with you more about the the connectors. They're deeper into that than I am. <laughs> eight eight eight. Yeah, it's IOC definitely. And of course, you know one twenty seven dot zero dot zero dot one. That's always an IOC. Yep. There you go. <laughs> Block it. No place like home. Great. Love the jokes. What product or output from OpenCTI have you found that higher level stakeholders get the most value from? You know, it really depends on the level of what you're looking at. So, you know, we have people that are following threat actors, as we talked about. They're really interested in, you know, the, like the Slay the Ransomware guys or, you know, the actual hackers. And then we have people that are following the organization, the, like the APTs. And then we have executives that are looking at, you know, what is, what is, you know, the IRGC as a whole doing? Or what is the country of Iran is doing? Or how is, you know, country X collaborating with country Y? You know, are, they, are we starting to see some tool, you know, sharing? going on. And so it really depends. Like this is a good tool. If you want to get really deep down into the weeds, you know, you can be the grunt on the ground, you know, in the foxhole, or you can be the general back at the, you know, at the huge, you know, sock at the Pentagon with the hundred thousand foot view, you know, the, you know, he's looking at, he's looking at the battle theater through, you know, a satellite. Um, it, it really just depends on, on what you want to, how you want to scope it.
Do you have any arresting powers and evidence procedures you must follow? Oh, absolutely. Uh, are you personally more in house on this? On this? Uh, so I was in the field for like 10 or 12 years and then I came up to headquarters uh, a number of years ago and I've been kind of like acting in the function of a, of a program manager uh, using my knowledge of how FBI agents conduct investigations in the field and carrying that um, through up to headquarters and saying and kind of helping everybody understand you know here's what's important to agents in the field agents investigators analysts in the field this is what matters to them uh, this is how i would use this tool you know if i was out in the field um, and so it kind of helps uh, it helps give us perspective you know at the headquarters level um, to do that but yeah I, I mean i still carry a gun uh, you know, if something happens i can you know if it's within my authorities i can still arrest people but you know, being from headquarters, you know, I, yeah, I probably, maybe I carry a coffee cup in the office more than I carry my gun. I mean, it's, it's on me, but you know, it's, it's, I use a coffee cup more admittedly. All right. So I think we're kind of at the end of our time. Uh, if you guys have any more questions, you can kind of hit me up in chat. Um, let me know. You can hit me up on any kind of side topics you didn't want to drop into here, uh, but I hope you guys got some some utility out of out of this stuff. Uh, thanks for coming in. Thanks for your time. Really enjoyed it. I'll talk to you guys later.